everyone, welcome to another Router Guides video. My name is Humphrey Chung, and in this video we're going to take a look at OSPF and see how it fails over. We're going to be using Practice Topology 5B, which is our three routers in a triangle, and just import those configs and fire everything up. We're going to start on Router 1. Nothing's been configured yet in terms of OSPF, but we do have our IP addresses configured and everything is in the up and up state. We're going to just fire up OSPF on all three routers. It's going to be very simple. Router OSPF 1 and network all zeros, all zeros, area 0. So that's router 1. We go over to router 2. Basically do the same thing. I could have used notepad but I'm getting a little lazy now. So network all zeros, all zeros, area 0. OSPF is running on router 2. And the same thing on router 3. Router OSPF1, network, all zeros, all zeros, area zero. All right, give it a couple seconds for the adjacencies to come up. And our show IP protocols for verification shows everything seems to be working okay. OSPF still hasn't come up. It's taking its sweet time. Okay, there you go. So show IP route. And now I should be able to ping basically anything in there. And looks like our LSA still haven't exchanged. Show IP OSPF database. There we go. Now we should be able to ping all threes. And we have a success. Ping all twos and a success as well. All right, so now looking at the topology, OSPF uses cost, which is the inverse of bandwidth for calculating routes. And we can see this if we go to show IP route. For router one to get to router three, let's take a look at this loopback address right here. It's telling us that to get here, our administrative distance is 110 and our cost is 11. The reason it's 11 is because this link right here is counted as a 10, and then the loopback is a one. So 10 plus one is 11. Now router one can get to router three's loopback via this way. So router one, router two, router two to router three, and then finally the loopback. However, the cost for that would be 10, 10, plus 1, which would be 21. Obviously, 21 is a lot greater than 11, so it doesn't choose to go that route. Now, what can happen here is that, let's say this link between router 1 and router 3 dies. So, bam, this link is gone. Well, the cost for this will actually become infinite because it can't, can't go from router 1 to router 3. So, the routing protocols will converge. Router 1 will say, hey, I need some help. I need to get to router 3. And then eventually it will go, it will reroute and go from router 1 to router 2, router 2 to router 3. Let's see how fast that happens. But first, before we do that, let's go to router 1. And if I do a show IP OSPF interface, we can see that for our fast Ethernet interfaces, we have a hello time of 10 seconds and a dead time of 40 seconds. So just keep that in mind. We're going to ping all threes. And you can see we have a successful ping. If I run a trace to all threes, you can see that it is going through 10, 10, 13, 3. So it's going from router 1 and hitting this interface on router 3 and then hitting the loop back pretty much as we would expect it to. Whoops. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to router 3. And I'm going to get this set up. I'm going to go into the interface, fast01. And I'm going to type in shut, but I'm not going to hit enter just yet. I'm going to go over to router 1's window. I'm going to do a ping, all threes. And we'll do a repeat of 5,000. So it sends out all those pings. I'm going to go over to router 3, hit enter. And you can see router 1 
does a little hiccup. We have a dot, a dot. So pings are being lost and then we have a reconvergence and router one is now sending through router two. Well, how do we prove that? Well, I can hit control shift six to stop my pings. I'll do another trace to all threes and let's see what the path is. I'm gonna move my router three window out of the way. Our trace is different. So now we're going through 10, 10, 12, two, which is this side right here. And then 10, 10, 23, three, which is this side right here. So it's smart enough to recognize that we're going to reroute this way. And finally, I have a OSPF neighbor is down. Okay, so you can see that it says router three is down. But if I do this, show IP route, we can see that everything's converged. I still have a route to all threes. And as you can see, my updated metric right here, my updated cost is a 21, reflecting that I have to go through here, this link, router one to router two, router two to router three, and then plus one for the loopback. So it's already figured that out. And of course, it's going to tell me that I have to get there by 10, 10, 12, two, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's start that ping again. I'm gonna move my router three window over here. We'll start the ping again, hit the up arrow a couple times, ping all threes, repeat 5,000. And then on router three, I'm gonna do a no shut, but not hit enter just yet. Go to router one, start that ping. Go to router three, no shut. And you can see everything's fine. The reason everything's fine is because it was sending through router two. When router three comes back up, that link comes back up, all it has to do is reroute and it doesn't drop anything. Okay, let's do a control shift six on router one. Let's do a show IP route. And you can see our route to the loopback of router three is now back to normal with a cost of 11, cumulative cost of 11 via 10.10.13.3. So that's pretty cool. This is how you can play around with the failover and just seeing how things fail over. Now, as you'll notice, if we go up to these pings right here, got to go, probably got to go pretty high. So here you can see that it died for three seconds, approximately three seconds. We can change this by adjusting the timers a little bit. And I think I did that in a previous video. We can actually get this down to one second or maybe not even have a hiccup at all so let's go on router one see if we could change that we'll do uh, conf t we have to do this per interface so interface fast zero zero and it's ip ospf dead interval so just type in dead and hit tab there to a question mark the command is minimal hello multiplier and then we'll do a three so IP, OSPF, dead interval, minimal, hello multiplier, three. So what this does is it makes the dead interval one second, and then every second we're gonna be sending out three hellos. So actually I'm gonna change, let's change that to four. Hit enter. I'm gonna copy this because I don't wanna be typing this all the time. And I'm going to go into int fast zero one, right click, there you go. And going to do the same thing on all the interfaces of router two and router three. So router two, int fast zero zero, right click, int fast zero one, right click, go over to router three, int fast zero zero, right click, and then over to zero one, right click. Okay, so now the moment of truth. Let's see if we can have pings, shut down the interface, and still have everything running. So just make sure I'm in faster one, I am. I'm gonna have that shut pre-typed in there. I'm gonna go over to router one. Let's do a ping, all threes. Actually, let's verify that the timers are indeed at one second and three, uh, four per second. One second for the dead interval and then four hellos per second. So show IP OSPF interface. And here you go, hellos are every 250 milliseconds and dead is at one. So that's good. 
start our pings, all threes, repeat 5,000. So there goes all of our pings. We do the shut. Let's see what happens. Oh, we still have two seconds. And yeah, we still have three seconds. That's not good. But that could be because I'm in GNS. We lost three packets, but that's okay. Okay, now we're going to stop the pings. We're going to go over to router 3, do a no shut. Okay, so our minimal command didn't exactly work out the way we expected to, but that could be because we're running in GNS. Let's try a different way. Let's go over to router 1, conf t interface fast 0 Let's do a IP OSPF dead interval of two seconds and then IP OSPF hello interval of one second. We'll have to do that to all of our interfaces fast to zero one. And as you can see our neighbors are going down, everything's going crazy because the timers don't match. Gonna go over to router two. So just going into every interface and changing the dead and hello interval. And finally on router three. And our last interface on router three. All right, so we're finally done on that. All of our neighbors come up. And now let's try it again, see if we get a different result. We might, we might not. Would be nice to actually see that the pings don't die as much. So I'm gonna go on interface fast zero one, do a shut, keep it in there. On router one, we'll start our pings, all threes, repeat 5,000. Our pings are flying. Go over to router 3, hit enter. Oh, we still have three die, but that's all right. At least we could see that it recognizes that the neighbor is down, and then it immediately starts reprocessing. That's probably good enough. Now, if you do this on regular routers, what you should see is that everything is going to converge right away, and you should not lose a packet. GNS might be a little different. Uh, also, if you have a really slow machine, you might see the pings uh, a lot more than three pings die. You might see four or five pings die if you're running on a very slow machine. All right, so that was a quick and easy video about OSPF reconversions, specifically starting a multiple, starting multiple pings on router one shutting down the interface on router 3 and seeing how it reconverges. We went over changing the dead timers. We tried to change the dead timers to minimal and still lost the same number of pings, but that's probably because we're running in GNS3. And then I showed you how to change the dead interval to 2 and then a hello interval to 1 to see if we could cut down on the lost pings and still had the same effect.